Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU and today I'm going to teach you guys how to jailbreak iOS 9.3.3, the latest public firmware as of recording this video, using the all new Pangu Combination PP Jailbreak app that is now available for installation via Sorik's own installer. So yeah, that's right. We no longer have to use the PP Helper app in Chinese. We can use it fully in English and the app is also in English. It looks so much better than previously. And if you do have the old version installed, then you can go ahead and uninstall that now. We no longer need it. We can move on to the brand new Pangu jailbreak application. I have spent quite a few hours on this tutorial, guys, so I'd love it if you could drop a like. It would mean so much, and I definitely appreciate you. Now, as always, down below in the description, there will be a post on my site with complete download links for absolutely everything you need, and there will also be a table of contents that will allow you to skip through certain segments of this video. If you're brand new to jailbreaking, though, just watch it in its entirety, but of course, if you're already jailbroken, then skip ahead to the part that applies to you if you want to reinstall the Pangu jailbreak app. Also, keep in mind that just like before, this is in fact a semi-untethered jailbreak, so to speak, which means that every time your device reboots, while you will not need a computer, you will need to utilize the application that we're going to install on our devices to actually patch the kernel and reapply a portion of the jailbreak so that way you can use any and all of the things that you obtain via your jailbreak, including Cydia. Every time you reboot, if you do not follow the steps at the end of this tutorial, you will not be able to use anything through Cydia. Don't worry though, it only takes 30 seconds. Also, in addition to being available for English, this new jailbreak also functions on both Mac OS X and Windows. In fact, it will even work on Linux if you happen to have a Linux-based OS. However, we're going to be focused on Windows, of course, and Mac in this tutorial. But the process between all operating systems is identical. All right, so up first, we need to get into support. So this jailbreak does include support and will function on iOS 9.2, 9.2.1, 9.3, 9.3.1, 9.3.2, and of course the latest firmware 9.3.3. Now, it will also function on the following devices, and unfortunately, it still does not work on 32-bit. The iPhone 5S, iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, iPhone 6S, iPhone 6S Plus, iPhone SE, the iPod Touch 6 Gen, which is what I'm going to be using to demo with in today's tutorial, the iPad Mini 2, Mini 3, Mini 4, iPad Air, iPad Air 2, and the iPad Pro. Again, all of those devices are fully supported. Unfortunately, if you did not hear your device mentioned in that list, it will not work currently. However, if and when Pangu does up update their jailbreak for support with older devices, I will release a new video. So click the subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to, that way you will be notified. Unfortunately though, it seems like Pangu might skip 32-bit this time around. But let's go ahead and move on from here and get into it. There are a few caveats that I need to mention before we actually proceed with the jailbreak. So first and foremost, if you updated to the version of iOS that your device is currently running via the settings app, meaning you went inside of settings general, software update and formed what's known as an OTA or over the air update, it may behoove you to actually restore inside of iTunes. It will just overall ensure the stability of your jailbreak provided iOS 9.3.3 is still being signed. Once it's no longer being signed, do not restore. So if there's a new firmware out to the public beyond iOS 9.3.3, just don't restore. However, provided you still can, again, connect your device to your computer via a standard USB cable, launch up iTunes, you're going to back up your device device and then click the restore button. Do not click the update button. Just restore it and then restore from a backup and then proceed with this tutorial. It's really just as easy as that. Also, if for whatever reason you're having any sort of complications, I recommend launching up the settings app, going inside of passcode and touch ID, if you do have a touch ID enabled device, completely disabling passcode lock, and then also turning off the find my iPhone feature inside of settings iCloud just the find my iPhone feature. And again, only do those two things if you are encountering issues actually trying to jailbreak. All right, now for those of you who previously had the Chinese version and you wanna get the English version installed on your device, it's as easy as deleting the application and then following the exact same steps I'm about to go over to install the new English Pangu IPA. Now we can go ahead and proceed. We're only going to need to install two things. The first of which is the actual IPA or the application file that we're going to be installing on our device to jailbreak with. The second of which is going to be Impactor. Now this is what we're going to use to fully install the app 
onto our device. And essentially, we're going to be sideloading the app using one of Apple's own features that was introduced in iOS 9, the ability to sign your own applications using any Apple ID without the required developer account. So what that means is that number one, you will have to actually re-sign this application every seven days. So you'll need to plug your device into your computer and follow the steps actually to install this app or IPA using Impactor. Number two, if you do have a developer account, you will be able to keep the app on your device for 365 days. Again, these rules are put in place by Apple themselves. Pangu is actually utilizing this method of app distribution so they don't have to burn through another exploit. It's really rather clever. It saves time on their part and it allows them to work on the next iOS 10 jailbreak. All right, so with all of that being said, you're going to need those two downloaded for either Mac or Windows. I have them on both, and let me just show you what you're going to want to do on Mac first. So once you do download the DMG or disk image file, you're just going to mount it and then drag Impactor over to Applications. I'm just going to click Replace because I already have it. It moves it to the Applications folder there, and you can go ahead and load it. And depending on your security settings, you may need to OK it. So switching views here, what I mean by that is that inside of the system preferences app, if we go over to security and privacy, you need to allow apps downloaded from anywhere or from Mac App Store and identified developers, and then it will just prompt you like mine is right here. So what you need to do is click on the little padlock to make changes, input your administrative password, and then if it's checked on the Mac App Store, select either of these bottom two, and then you should be good to go. I'm just going to okay it, so I'm going to click on open, and here we go, we have Cydia Impactor, and we can go ahead and install it via Impactor. Now we are good to go on Mac at this point. If we wanted to hop on over to Windows here, let me show you what you're going to wanna do. Now your version of Impactor, instead of being distributed via a disk image file, you're going to get it inside of a zip. If this is the case for you and you're on Windows, you're just going to want to right click it followed by extract all. It's just going to ask you where you want to extract it. By default, it should just be wherever the zip is. Mine's on my desktop, so it's just going to extract it to the desktop. It's as simple as that. You'll then receive this folder here. Do not delete anything inside of this folder. That's absolutely paramount. You just want to run Impactor from directly within this folder and then just click on run and boom, there you go. It's going to ask you if you want it to check automatically for software updates. Sure, whatever, let's just check automatically. But here we go, we have Impactor right here and it's fully ready to use. So now that we are caught up on both, we're actually just going to continue. So these steps will be identical from here on out. What we're going to want to do is plug our device into our computer via a standard USB cable. And after you've done so, you need to launch up iTunes and ensure that iTunes does successfully recognize your device. As you can see, mine's already syncing to my computer, so it does recognize it. However, if it is the first time that you're connecting your device to your computer, or the first time since it was last restored, you may have to trust or authenticate the connection. What I mean by that is on the device, it will prompt you to trust the connection, whereas on the computer, it will ask you to continue. You need to, of course, trust it on your device and continue on your computer. And once that connection has been established, you can continue. So as long as iTunes recognizes your device, you're good to go. All right, so after that happens and after it recognizes it, you will see inside Obsidia Impactor that it has detected your device up at the top. And you'll see this little drop down right here below. Of course, by default, it does say install super SU or super user, AKA root my Android. Just leave it at that. It's kind of a little bit weird, but whatever. Just so long as up at the top, it does have your device listed there, you're good to go. And then you just need to drag over the IPA or the actual jailbreak application file into the Cydia Impactor interface. You should see a little plus there. And then once you release it, it will prompt you to enter your iTunes email login. Now you need to do this, guys. This is kind of like previously utilizing the PP Helper tool. However, this time we're 100% certain that they do not pass it anywhere. So you can rest easy if you are using your own Apple ID for this. Sorik even said that he just passes it to Apple and that's it. Absolutely no one else. He doesn't collect it. It doesn't go through his servers or anything. However, if you wanted to just create a throwaway Apple ID, you can do that as well. And that's actually what I did. So I'm just going to input my Apple ID right now and we're going to continue. It's then going to ask you for your password. This is key that you do enter it properly. If you don't, then it will not work. Remember the re 
reason why we're actually doing this is because it's using your own Apple ID through Apple's own services to sign this application file so you can install it off of the App Store. That's the only way to install an IPA off of the App Store without a developer enterprise certificate. All right, so bringing the iPod Touch up into view here, we're just going to click on OK because we do have the password entered now, and it's just going to go through the steps inside of Impactor. It's just going to sign it, and you can actually pretty much remain hands off at this point. I'm just leaving it up on your screens here so you can see exactly what happens. Again, it's just that fast. We already have the Pangu app on our 6th gen iPod Touch, and if it does ask you or if it does mention anything about revoking certificates, what that's doing is it's just telling you that, hey, you already have an application installed on your device that was distributed off of the App Store using this Apple ID, and do you want to revoke those certificates and use new ones to sign this new application? So if you use that exact same Apple ID to sign the Chinese version, then yeah, you're going to want to do that and just click on OK. And then it will install this app on your device. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and close out of Impactor. We no longer need it. We'll only need it again in seven days when this certificate on the iPod Touch expires and we have to re-sign it. And it's just that easy. You only have to follow those steps. Just open up Impactor, plug your device in, drag the IPA over into Impactor, and then log in with your Apple ID and password. And that's it. Apple can't patch it. So long as you do not update, you'll be good to go and you'll be able to install it on your device time and time again. And the reason why we actually need it and why we can't fully delete it ever is because when you reboot, you have to reapply a portion of the jailbreak. All right, so switching views here, we're going to do this on our device. We don't need our computer any longer. We've already installed the application. We're only going to need it again in a week when we have to reinstall it. So what we need to do is just swipe over to the settings application and then go inside of general, scroll down to the bottom, device management, you're going to see a developer app listed there, the Apple ID that you use to sign the application. So just tap into it, followed by trust, and then trust again. You can go ahead and then press the home button, find your Pangu app, open it, and then you can continue. If you do not follow those steps and you do not authenticate the actual certificate inside of that portion of the settings app, then you will not be able to open the application and it will say untrusted developer. Don't panic at that point, you just need to launch up settings and follow those steps. All right, so we do need to OK notifications. This is absolutely critical. You need to OK notifications. And everything I'm going to say from here on out, you really need to pay close attention to. All right, so now inside of the interface here, it's saying to press the start button to jailbreak. And it has identified again that we are on an iPod Touch 6th gen running iOS 9.3.3. We'll get into additional confirmation on that though toward the end of this video. All right, so we're going to tap on start here and then we're going to lock our device and that's it. You're going to then wait a few seconds. And if you do see a storage almost full notification, don't worry, that's completely fine. That's because it does write to the system logs. And as you can see, we do have a Pangu jailbreak notification there. It says jailbreak has already succeeded but still needs a few minutes to install Cydia and respring. So at this point I'm just going to continue to press the home button. Remain on your lock screen while you can unlock. Do not close out of Pangu. And again I just recommend hanging out on the lock screen. That way you will ensure the success of your jailbreak. As you can see it did respring. We're still at the lock screen just sliding over there. And now we can go ahead and swipe over. We do have Cydia. How easy is that guys? It's so amazing. We just have to install a simple app in Cydia Impactor. And then boom, we actually have Cydia. And let's go ahead and swipe down to the bottom and confirm that we are in fact on iOS 9.3.3 utilizing Cydia's identifying text. All right, so getting a close up of this here, you'll notice that it does confirm this iPod Touch 7,1 or 6th gen iPod Touch is running iOS 9.3.3 with Cydia 1.1.27. And let's go ahead and switch on over here to the settings app. So we're inside of settings, general, about, and down below at the bottom there for the version, it does confirm we are running iOS 9.3.3, Apple's latest public firmware as of recording this video. So let's switch back over to Cydia here and then go to the changes tab. As you can see, we do have available packages here so you can install things. Just note that you absolutely need to install packages that are compatible with this latest jailbreak. If you happen to install something that's incompatible, it could jeopardize your jailbreak. So down below in the description, I will have a complete list list of constantly updated compatible tweaks only install a tweak if it is on said list and it is updated daily. It also contains 25 of my favorite tweaks for the iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak. And quickly in this video, just to confirm, we're going to install OpenSSH here. So install followed by confirm. 
That's also, of course, how you do install things via Cydia for those of you who are new. And once it is done, it will either ask you to return to Cydia to respring or to reboot your device, depending on what the tweak needs. For OpenSSH, it's just going to have us return and boom, there we go. We do have it installed because up in the top now it does say modify. All right, so what I'm going to teach you guys how to do now is essentially reboot your device and reapply the portion of the jailbreak that is required to use anything after a reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide to power off here and I will be back once this sixth gen iPod reboots. Okay, back on the lock screen now, sliding to unlock. You'll notice that when we try to launch up Cydia or if you try to open anything that you obtained via Cydia, it will just crash. That's because again, we do have to launch up the Pangu app and reapply the portion of the jailbreak that follows once we actually tap on start. But first, after you open the Pangu app, you need to wait inside of the interface for approximately 20 seconds. If you don't wait for 20 seconds and you just haphazardly tap on start followed by locking your device, it may actually reboot instead of reapplying the portion of the jailbreak that's required. If that's the case, you may be wondering why does Cydia still crash? It's because you didn't wait inside of the Pangu interface. So after waiting for 20 seconds, then we can tap on start, which is about now. So let's tap on start and then wait five seconds. After five seconds is up, lock your device just using the power and lock button. And then you will receive a notification again saying jailbreak succeeded, but still needs a few to respring. After that happens, again, you will see the Apple logo on your device, or at least you should if you followed these steps correctly. It's very easy. Now I just blocked that out because it is showing my Apple ID, but we can just slide over to unlock now and we can launch up Cydia and it will work successfully. You've done everything correct. And the only thing that's left now is to enjoy your jailbreak. I really do hope this tutorial helped you guys. Be sure to leave any comments you have down below in the comment section. If you're at all confused or you have issues or complications with this jailbreak, sign up at jailbreakandhacks.com forward slash forums. We'll help you out there on the jailbreak and hack forums. And of course, if you want to be updated more frequently, such as when I release new videos, whether they be jailbreak tutorials or simply updates, click the subscribe button below next to my channel name to ensure that you don't miss out. Also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Device community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.